All right, a video disproving this lie told by Roman apologists, Roman Catholic apologists, that, oh, the Catholic Church gave the world the Bible. Quite contrary, the Catholic Church actually tried to stop the world from having the Word of God, which is exactly what Satan wants, by the way. I'll show you that from the Word of God, that Satan wants to deprive you of the Word of God. He wants to deprive you from the, of, of the Scriptures. And he's used his Roman Catholic Church to do so. See, the Roman Catholic Church is the original Church of Satan. And they've done more damage to the body of Christ than Anton LaVey's little group that he started could ever imagine of doing. I'll put it like that. Roman Catholicism is not Christianity whatsoever. And even Christianity is not really a scriptural term. Okay, uh, Roman Catholicism is not the faith given by Jesus Christ. I'll, I'll put it like that. Okay, The Christ of Roman Catholicism is a false Christ. It's a spirit of Antichrist. Plain and simple. But here's uh, the Roman Catholic Church doing Satan's bidding by trying to deprive you of the Word of God. And here's, how, here's what I mean by that. Because Satan wants to deprive you of the scriptures. Luke chapter 8, verse 11 to 12. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil, which t and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. That's exactly what the Roman Catholic Church has done. They've taken away the scriptures and controlled Europe for centuries, you know, getting, getting kings to submit to you because they'll say, if you don't do what you're told, we're going to take away your salvation. Plain and simple. Lest they should believe and be saved. See, if they had the word of God, the Roman Catholic Church would not have the kind of control they do. And they still have the control now, just not outwardly, because now people have the word of God. So, you know, the Pope's little edicts, oh, I'm going to excommunicate you, it holds no weight whatsoever because my salvation is in the hand of God. John chapter uh, 10, verse 27 to 30. The Pope can't take any, anyone's salvation away because it was never his to give in the first place. So anyway, whole other issue. But here's uh, from David Cloud's article on the matter, showing that the Roman Catholic Church wants to deprive people from the Word of God, and they deprive Catholics of the Word of God. A lot of ex-Catholics who who have gotten born again have testimonies where they were told by their priest not to read the Bible. They would read the Bible, they would see how Roman Catholic customs clearly contradict the Word of God. They would raise the questions to the priest, and the priest would just tell them, don't read the Bible, don't read the Bible. There's so many testimonies like that on the internet of ex-Catholics saying that, of how they were told by the priest to not read the scriptures. Why? Because they can't control you when you read the scriptures. But here's a history on, on the fact that they want to deprive you of the Word of God. This is on uh, David Cloud's article. Uh, he's got a lot of good information here. It says, note the following facts. The Council of Toulouse, 1229, and the Council of Tarragona, 1234, forbade the lady to possess or read the vernacular translations of the Bible. No exceptions were mentioned. Oh, but they gave the world the Word of God, sure. No, they deprive the world of the Word of God. The Council of Toulouse used these words, quote, We prohibit the permission of the books of the Old and New Testament to the laymen, except perhaps they might desire to have the Psalter or the, some bravery, probably not saying that right, for the divine service or the, uh, the uh, hours of the Blessed Virgin Mary uh, for devotion, expressly forbidding their having other parts, parts of the Bible translated into the vulgar tongue. These declarations uh, of, the, of these formal Catholic councils held power for centuries. Thereafter, were repeatedly cited as authoritative by subsequent popes and councils. In fact, the declarations have never been rescinded. Yeah, they still don't want their people reading the Word of God. Hence, you see the testimonies from ex-Catholics saying, you know, they'd raise questions to the priest, like, wait a minute, we're doing this, but the Word of God says, you know, we're not supposed to eat flesh and drink, we're, we're not supposed to eat uh, flesh and drink blood, but then we're doing the Mass. What, what, what's with that? And the priest would just be like, well, don't, just don't read the Word of God, be a good Catholic, come to Mass, whatever else. You know, be a good little sheep in the cult. Plain and simple. Uh goes on in the article, the Roman Catholic Church did not give people the Bible. To argue that the Roman Catholic Church forbade only unauthorized vernacular versions is to argue a technicality which has no meaning in reality. Uh, some odd exception which might have existed at some particular place at some point in history does not change this rule. Uh, the fact is the Roman Catholic Church did not labor to give people the Bible, uh, and wherever Rome held power, people did not have access to the scriptures. This is the bottom line. Consider the very important English tongue. The Roman Catholic Church did not produce a Bible in English until 1582, fully two centuries after the Whitecliffe made the uh, first English Bible in more than half a century after Tyndale made his masterpiece for the English-speaking world. Rome had done everything in its power to destroy the Wycliffe and Tyndale English scriptures. Wycliffe's bones were exhumed and burned by Catholic authorities, and Tyndale was burned at the stake. That's another thing you see with Rome, and her, and also her, her uh, harlot children, many of the Protestant uh, sects, as well as Islam and Judaism and whatever else. You see this kind of murderous hatred for their enemies. That's another identification 
of Babylon, drunk him with the blood of the saints. Uh, in David Cloud's article, he goes on, Consider the situation in Ireland, another bastion of Roman Catholicism, in 1907 and 1908, a little less than, a little over 100 years ago. The Irish Church Mission made a diligent search of bookshops in Catholic Ireland to determine the availability of Catholic Bibles. Note the result. In the booksellers, shops of Athone, Balbriggan, Drog, Helda, Mullingar, Wexford, and Como, I'm pronouncing it right, not a Bible or New Testament or a scrap of scripture of the church's authorized version could be found. The shop assistant at Mullingar, Mullingar saying, I never saw a Catholic Bible in Cork. With over 76,000 inhabitants, uh, there are 24 Roman Catholic booksellers, of whom 20 did not keep the scriptures. Two of them asking the would-be purchaser of the Dewey uh, New Testament, of which they knew nothing. So they don't even know it even exists, you know. Their own versions, let alone the, the Word of God, the, tra the inspired Word of God, the King James Bible. They don't even, don't even know their own Bibles exist. <laughs> uh, he says, um, where was I at? You know, uh, you know nothing of the monthly publication. Uh, Dublin itself, as out of four Roman Catholic publishing establishments, only one had only one of them had the scriptures. Well, this the answer was given for inquiry of the New Testament at the depot of the Catholic True Society. They said we don't keep it. Uh, the conclusion arrived by the commissioners who ransacked bookshops book in Ireland for Bibles is that nine tenths of the cities and towns and villages in Ireland, a Roman Catholic could not produce. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, procure procure. A copy of the Roman Catholic Bible or the New Testament. So they don't even have their own Bibles, let alone the actual Word of God. They don't even have their own corruptions of the Word of God. Some of them don't even seem to know it even exists. <laughs> oh, but they gave the world the Word of God, sure. You know. And and by the way, too, this this thing of, of only the, the Catholic the Bible belongs to the Catholic Church. Uh no organization has a right to claim ownership of the Word of God. Okay, God is the one who owns his word. Plain and simple. So it's just another one of the many blasphemies that Roman Catholics engage in. Oh, it belongs to the Catholic Church. No, it belongs to God. That's who, that's, that's who the Word of God belongs to. Uh, continuing on, it was 1831 before the first Bible was printed in Spanish America, and when the Catholic Church finally did allow the publication, allow some publication of the, of the scriptures there, they were also outrageously expensive, and the common man could not afford a copy. Yeah, yeah, money-hungry cult is what it is. A traveler across Brazil in 1902 who inquired carefully into the subject found in a thousand miles bishops and priests in plenty, but not a single copy of the scriptures in any lay home. This was back in 1902, you know? So we're not talking about Middle Ages, we're talking about a little over 100 years ago. Uh, nor had had almost, sorry, nor, nor had most of the residents even heard of the Bible, though they were willing, so they haven't even heard, they haven't never even heard it exists, let alone actually have one in their presence. Uh, never heard of the Bible, though they were willing and anxious to buy a copy when it was shown to them. Yeah, exactly. So, they gave the world the Bible, so that's why Catholics don't know it even exists? Sure. It's a cult, is what it is. And they know that if you have the word of God, see, the Catholics were anxious to purchase it because they never heard of, heard of it. And here's how you how, here's how you win a Catholic over. Forget all the debates, forget all the all the, the apologetics and whatever else. Get it, give them a copy of the word of God. Give them a Bible. Get the word of God in their hands. You know? That's how you see these testimonies by ex Catholics. What got them out of the Catholic Church and got them, you know. Born again, reading the Word of God, and seeing how Catholic traditions don't line up. And then when you bring us up the Catholic apologists, they have to just twist and contort the scriptures to make it teach Catholic doctrine. But just simply reading the Word of God as it is, you don't get Catholic doctrine, you know? Well, you know, well, we can eat flesh and drink blood at the Mass. Wait a minute, the Word of God expressly prohibits that in Genesis chapter 9, Leviticus 17, Leviticus 7, Acts chapter, I think it's 15, you know? Well, they can't answer that. So they have to say, well, John chapter 6, verse 53 says it, but then they take that out of context too. You read the context, it's talking about Jesus Christ is the bread of life, and you eat you eat of that flesh by believing on him. You don't literally eat his flesh. You see, they have to contort it. Simply reading the word of God means you're no longer a Catholic. Plain and simple. You know, so, uh, you know, they gave the world the Bible. No. If you read, if you, again, you win a Roman Catholic, just get a Bible in their hands. Get them reading the scriptures. Get them reading it diligently and saying like look compare it to your catholic traditions does it does it line up does it does it match up and if they do that they'll leave the catholic church and then if they, if they bring this up with the priest a lot of times they'll just be told well just don't read the bible because they don't want you reading the word of god because then the catholic cult can't control you further proving that roman catholicism is of the devil because remember satan wants to deprive you of the word of god luke chapter 8 verse 11 to 12. so anyway i wanted to show you guys that May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.
Thank you.